Rakido Sakate, Marados to Rakida Paragata, Sanda Baronda Septedini da Gatalish, Rakibaros to Verakira, Manda Patariras to Fecaporias, Regedini Sanzora Paradiastos. Pray in the Holy Ghost for the next one minute. Prepare your spirit to receive. Is that the words I speak to you? They are spirit and they are life. You need your spirit prepared to receive the engrafted word with meekness. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Again, this morning, we've come to receive of your word. We ask that you equip us. We ask that you enlarge us. And we ask that you establish us. Take all the praise. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Again, it's my honor to be here to bring us the word of the Lord. I want to sincerely celebrate our Father, God's servant, the Patriarch, Daddy Gio, Pastor E.E. Adeboe, and our dear mama, Pastor Mrs. Foluloke Adeboe, for raising this tall platform where Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. I also want to honor our father here this morning for his presence. It's an honor to have you. Can we please celebrate? Pastor Obunge, thank you so much, sir, for having you. It's an honor to have you, sir. I don't take it for granted. And of course, every minister of God that is here, the youth pastor, I, I was with him yesterday, Pastor Shola Oweye, thank you so much for having me here to share with God's people. In the next one hour, we'll go into the Word of God and trust the Lord to bring us illumination and empowerment. Hallelujah. I want to share with us on the topic, a theme for this morning is um, enlarging your capacity for dominion. I believe this is a very sensitive topic and I'm trusting the Lord for the inspiration to bring us God's counsel that will not only inspire and educate, but empower for dominion indeed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Lord. We give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 28 will be my anchor scripture this morning. God had created the world and somehow in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 after the Lord created the world the Bible said and the earth was without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And we saw that God returned to recreate the world that was destroyed. This morning is not my job to bring us understanding on what happened. But God came back to recreate the world. And after recreating the face of the earth, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we saw that the community of the Godhead, the council of the Godhead, sat back and they began a deliberation to create a new governor that will rule over the earth realm. And the Bible said, God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. And he said, in the image of God, he made man. And he said, male and female, he made them both. And he went further in verse 28. He said, and the Lord blessed them. And the Lord said, 
Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. And have dominion. And so we saw from that scripture that God's plan was for man to have dominion on the face of the earth. And so our existence will count for nothing except as we bring God's government to the face of the earth. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Now when you study the book of Genesis, chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, there are two things you will find about dominion. The first thing you will find about dominion is the capacity requirement for dominion and then the protocol of dominion. What we have in Genesis 1.28 is the protocol, the administrative protocol for dominion. Fruitfulness, replenishing, subduing, multiplying. Those are administrative procedures. And that will not be our emphasis this morning. From our team this morning, our emphasis is about the capacity building requirement for dominion. The organic aspect of dominion. If your capacity is not built, you will not have what it takes to bring the administrative requirement for dominion. And so when you study the book of Genesis, you are going to find five things that God gave to man as an organic, intrinsic requirement, capacity requirement for dominion. And when the devil came to attack man, these were the five things he took from man. Because if these things are in you, dominion will be a byproduct. And as you study that scripture, you will find out that God deliberately placed these things because he knew that man of necessity must have them if dominion will be in view. And so we pick them out quickly. We show you how man lost it. And then we show you what Christ did in order to restore man to it. And then dominion will become natural. In Genesis 1.26, where we, where we began to read from, the Bible said, God speaking now, let us make man in our own image. And so the first intrinsic organic reality that God put in man as a tool of dominion was his image. Anybody who will exercise dominion on the face of the earth must bear the image of God. Let us make man in our own image. The second thing God gave man as a tool of dominion is in that same scripture. And in our likeness. That is God's righteous character. Anybody who wants to exercise dominion must of necessity exhibit God's righteous character. And then number three, you are going to find another thing God made available to man. That is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible said, in the cool of the day, it said the voice of God came walking in the garden. The voice of God was not spoken to the man. The voice of God came walking in the garden. So this was not primarily about communication. This was actually about intimacy and fellowship. Because God was not talking to the man. The voice of God came walking in the garden. So God actually brought his presence into the abode of the man. Eden, naturally, is the habitat of God's presence. But in addition to that, God brought his presence into the man. So when the voice of God came walking in the man, God came to have intercourse and intimacy with the man. So the third thing the man had that produced or provided the basis for dominion was intimacy with God. And then number four, we saw in Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, 
the Bible said, God planted trees in the garden. And he said there were all manner of good trees there. And he said in the midst of the garden, God also planted the tree of life. So the third thing God made available for dominion was his life. If you study man carefully, you are going to discover that man has three kinds of life. There is the life that is in his blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11 says, The life of the flesh is in the blood. And then in Genesis 2 7, we saw that when God formed the man from the dust, he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. So there is another life in the soul of the man. But there was a life God wanted the man to have, which would be in his spirit. And that life is the life God planted in the midst of the garden. Because man is a body, a soul, and a spirit. And so there are three definite lives that will power him. When you cut off a man's hand, the hand will still be shaken because there is life in the blood. The natural life is sustained by the blood. This is why you need to eat food every day in order to live in this realm. If you don't eat for 21 days, your life, the life of the blood can depart. The flesh will die because there is a life that sustains the blood. That life is called bios. That's the animal life. Even the dog has that life. But there is also a life in the soul that gives you the capacity to think cognitively. That life is called suke. That's what forms your psychology. But the realm of interaction that God wanted to have with man is superior to just body and soul. God wants to interact with man at spirit level. So he created another life called Zoe for the spirit of the man. He hid that life in the midst of the garden for the man to take so that he would have dominion. But unfortunately, the man didn't take it. It is when man is in position, possession of God's nature, God's righteous character, God's presence, and God's life that man can now have dominion. Because let them have dominion is a commandment. It's a declaration. So there is a declaration that God gave to the human race that makes man an entity of dominion. This is why every man wants power. Every man wants authority. Because God spoke it into the DNA of man. When he created man, he said, let them have dominion. So the five organic things that makes for dominion is number one, God's nature which is his essence or his glory. Number two, God's righteous character. Number three, God's presence. Number four, God's life. And number five, the law of the Lord that is in the soul of the man. If you lack these five things, no matter what you do, you cannot exercise dominion. And the devil knew it. So when the devil came for man, he didn't go for the activity. God had told the man, be fruitful. Multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. The devil knows those administrative protocols will not count if it damages the intrinsic reality. So what the devil did was to go for the inert aspect of the man, not the activity of the man. And it came to defy the man. And he knew what to do to defy the man. So when the serpent came into the garden, he began to argue and present a proposition to the man. Did God say? Why did they ask him if God told them to have dominion or not? He was dealing with what had to do with the inner man. Did God say you should not eat of any, every tree in the garden? And the woman innocently, in her naivety, said, Of all the trees in the garden we can eat, but the tree that is in the midst of the garden we, will, we should not eat or touch. God didn't even say not to touch. But the woman was speaking what she felt Adam had communicated to her. Meanwhile, the question you ask, if you know there is a tree in the midst of the garden that you should not eat, why did 